I am doing fantastic. Hold that thought. Let's try that again. With my mic unmuted this time. Hello! My name is Dad. I know! I make this mistake every time! It's a part of the show. It's a part of the show. Anyways, I'm Gavin. We've got, uh... We've got a good show for you guys tonight. Our return to Wargroove. Um... For a Stronghold series number three, a show match series, where we get some of the top talent and personalities to uh, show us their talent and show us and showcase the game of Wargroove. I'm here with the talented Doc and Faded Son, who did not mute their mics before the broadcast started, so they didn't make the same mistake. Doc, how are you today? I am doing fantastic. And then Faded Son, first time on our desk, um, he's the resident expert nowadays on Wargroove. He's the big brain, he's uh, top TO and map maker, he's gonna sort of walk us through what's changed in Wargroove over the past uh, past few months. Faded Sun, how are you today? I'm doing well. Um, what's changed over the last few months? Um, we've had Groove of War 3, the next big tournament. Um, it's been a lot of new maps recently. It's a lot of new stuff coming from the devs, so it's been pretty exciting. Right, right. And then you mentioned stuff coming from the devs, and this is the patch. The patch was announced today, but uh, it has not launched yet. They have the, it's a cross-platform game, many, many platforms for Wargroove, and uh, you know, so there's a lot of approval processes. And most importantly, welcome to all the PS4 players who uh, just picked up the game today across uh, most regions. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we guys can we can show you guys what a higher level Wargroove play looks like from people who've been playing the game competitively for a while, um, and that's what Stronghold series is. So for those of you who have not watched this, if you're fans of my regular content or uh, just haven't watched a Wargroove stream before or a Stronghold series before, we have a show match series called Stronghold series, where like I said, we get some of the top players and talent across Wargroove, and. Uh, just have a one game show match, uh, different rule sets, stuff like that to sort of highlight that talent. And we have two matches for you guys today. We have game one between Gimbal B and Sedge, and game two versus Shu and Bello. There won't be a game three, but both players, you know, a first place match or anything like that. We just have two separate matches between these two pairs to show you guys. But. As they're getting ready, we're going to give you a quick rundown on uh, what our game one's going to be. It's going to be Gimbal versus Sedge. And uh, the way that I see it, the storyline for this game, guys, is uh, these are two players who are putting self imposed handicaps on themselves. Gimbal is going to be playing Ryota today, even though he's typical favorites, Valder and Dark Mercia. Uh, Gimbal's an active TO in the scene. He's an active streamer for the scene. He's pretty much the one who's commentated the most games of Wargroove. Um, and he doesn't play in many competitions, but Faded, you tell me he's actually pretty threatening. Yeah, I played a lot of test games with Gimbal. Um, he's a very strong player. He almost always beats me or gets me into a bad situation. And then, um... Doc, you said you played a few test games with him, too. Basically, the same experience. Yeah, he's definitely a very solid player, understands the game well. Um, we didn't. We played a lot of test games as well, so I haven't had a chance to really see some of his really good stuff, but he's definitely a competent player, um, well in his own right. Um, right. He's, I respect him a lot, because he's really helping running a lot of stuff nowadays, um, taking over for... Um, skits and all that good stuff. Definitely a, a key figurehead member in the uh, competitive community for sure. And now he gets a chance to sort of uh, highlight that he's not just a talking head. You know, he gets to actually play a game for once. So I saw him on our Reddit post. Pretty excited about getting a chance to play. Um, and then we have Sedge, Sedge Hun. Um, literally Sedge, like the character. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's what what can you say about him, right? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Sedge is great. Um Where do you start with someone like Sedge? Faded, do you wanna you wanna start this off? 
<laughs> um, so Sedge seems to have embodied the, the character of Sedge. He is Sedge. If you try to tell him he's not, he'll, he'll deny it. Um, it's kind of a... He'll haunt you. Favorite. He'll haunt you. <laughs> he's uh yeah he's the uh he, he he's the biggest story when we talk about quote unquote self imposed handicaps he always plays Sedge, and uh, I I think Sedge is not entirely looked highly upon as far as tier goes but you know <laughs> um, um but that said you know we we alluded to the patch from Chucklefish earlier um yeah and Sedge is uh Sedge is slated to get buffs. He's basically in charge, I think, almost twice as fast, if not even faster than that, um, in order to get his first groove off, which is a huge thing, because in most games with Sedge, he never gets to the point of getting his first groove off. It just takes so long to charge up. Right. Um, got my battle pup in the background there, sorry about that. Uh, we asked Sedge earlier, and we'll show you guys on stream this, we, we asked Sedge... Hey, can you give us some accolades? And we got hit with this. You can see it on screen. Let's see if I can center it a little bit more. Which, I have no idea how to distill that down to you guys. So we just screen capped it. Sedge is a character, dude. He's 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 the master of the hunt. Just, just, holy shit. So, so smart. He is dedicated to his character. I respect the hell out of that. There is a reason why he is very likely going to win the Community Choice Award for War Groove of War Three. Right, there is a Community Choice Award for a, a play. It's the uh, it's the Player's Choice Award for Groove of War Three, and uh, he's going to be the presumed winner and mo very likely deserves it. Um, <laughs> he's an active community player or competitive player. He plays in most tournaments, um, and little did a lot of us know he's a YouTube he's a YouTuber. And uh, I just put a link to his masterpiece in chat if you guys want to take a look at that uh, at your own time. But uh, him with follow. He's he's an active Wargroove community member as well. So, uh, with that said, let's go ahead and try it again to game here. I think the players are ready. Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. Um, if you guys could, one of you could go ahead and alert the players that we are ready. We'll get in to game one. Of Stronghold series number three with Sedge and Gimbal B. Should be getting to that game any second now. So you do see the Gimbal readied up as Ryota and Sedge is playing Sedge as himself. Uh, what do you think about the Ryota pick? Because I know that you said Gimbal was doing this mainly for fun, that he, uh, he's... What, what do you think we're going to see from that? Mm. I think I think Gimbal is looking for some kind of big brain Ryota groove play that'll just kind of entertain everyone, just give us a big show. Yeah, probably something along those lines. Ryota definitely has... He's not the worst thing. He, he's down there but um he has some interesting stuff he can do especially since they made the small tweak to him a while back that definitely helped him um help make his groove a little bit more having more utility which was really cool so this map is called uh port island panic three this is the 3.1 version i believe that's right. And one of the things notable about this version is basically trebuchets are banned. Um, this is achieved by having only one spot where you can build um, where you can build unit li land units from, and it's covered in a woods, so you can't build trebuchets, you can't build wagons or ballistas. That was a pretty long first turn for a timer. At uh, 20, burn 40 seconds right off the bat. Um, yeah, it should be noted that the timer on your screen is not technically the official timer. It's the one run by uh, us in the broadcast. Faded is keeping the official timer in the background. So if you see any discrepancies, that will be why he... Uh, Faded has the official last word on any timer disputes. But both players get a 30-minute timer. This is not official UI-supported tech. This is our side, self-imposed community limit on competitive. 
Um, so for those of you guys on PS4, this is not something that you guys will have to really worry about too much. Uh, there's no incremental time either. There's no Fisher clock, anything like that. It's just pure 30 minute chess clock for this game. So yeah, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, I don't think many people have played with a pure chess clock like this. Uh, what? How do you think that changes strategy a little bit? I think it's going to be a bit interesting to see how it plays out in a game like Wargroove. Because in chess, um, generally, after you hit the mid game, the game gets simpler and simpler. Both players have traded away a lot of pieces, and the end game at the very high level is fairly solvable. Right. Um, whereas when you're pl and then the chess timer like um kind of crunch really makes things kind of weird because but you can't really crunch it's a very room. solved state right yeah you've got you you've get, got like, when you've got five seven. minutes when you got five minutes left and you have 30 units on the board you know you need to make a decisive play in the mid game not the late game yeah it's definitely very hard to close out a game i would say in the late game if you're very short on time so i imagine that you either close the game in the mid game or whoever has more time is probably just going to win the late game right pressured into making worse and worse decisions especially since yeah. you have so many more opportunities to make poor decisions so that's a turtle from um from gimbal and i'm going to point out about the turtle is often when we talk about naval maps we always joke of something called the first turtle advantage where whoever builds who can start putting down naval units first gets a large advantage because um naval combat is very units trading one for one. Um, a turtle can do a huge amount of shit damage to any other naval unit, basically, um, if it can get the first hit. So as a result, that's one of the big things that um, map designers have had to really struggle with when designing naval maps. Faded, you're, uh, you're part of map committee, you're TO, you're a map maker. Can you tell us a little bit more just briefly about what goes into uh, map design for competitive? Like, Why, why are sure. the maps we see in quick play, the same as the maps we see here for higher level play. Um, so, so I designed this map, and so you can see it's version 3.1, so I had a struggle balancing this map for a long time. Um, like Doc said, uh, naval, naval is very difficult to balance. Um, they trade really pretty evenly. Their naval has very strong units. In earlier versions of this map, harpoons were a very strong and oppressive unit. Um, I had to lay down a lot of different terrain to slow down certain units so I can balance out all of these naval units that kind of just destroy each other. Um, so you also asked about quick play. Um, what, what was your question about quick play? Well, I was going to say like, quick play maps, basically. Right. So if you're if you're new, if you're watching for the first time, you're on Twitch and you're like, I, I saw this game on PS4 the other day. Should I buy it? Um, you know, the game that you're watching now is not going to really look like what you're going to see in Quick Play. Um, uh, yeah. Just by terms of design. Yeah. Um, in, so in, in competitive maps, we tend to limit strong units such as um, Spearmen and Trebuchets, who have, in Quick Play maps, have shown to just be very strong and impressive units due, due to those Chucklefish design maps. And not only I would say it's a flaw of the map design, but in general, a lot of the quick play settings are not suitable for competitive. One of the weather. big things we do in competitive is we just turn off weather completely. Which, by um, the way, before you go any further on that, Chucklefish did confirm they're turning off weather for quick play uh, on the next patch. That is... I am very glad they're making that change. Um, it's really important because, well... A lot of people argued, oh, weather is random and that's bad. That's not the issue with weather at all. The problem with weather is that because of the way ranges work, it inherently favors player one, like by a ridiculous margin. Like player one basically just wins through weather so often. Sedge, uh, playing a pretty methodical early game does get the first two center villages um, by design, I assume, right? Um, I think this might have been a misplay from Sedge, because what Gimbal is going to be able to do here with his commander is he's going to be able to hit this, um, um, the bottom village and just get a ton of groove for free off that. So, for any newer players, a big thing about playing, um, at competitive levels is managing groove, because grooves are generally very powerful, I suppose, 
less powerful in this game um, just because the commanders cho chose it. But basically, it's like their special power. Right. And you charge that special power by either getting a little bit every turn, attacking things, or killing units. And in this game, all buildings are basically coded exactly like units. Like they even have a move thing if you hover over them, uh, which is really funny to me. But um, killing a village will in fact give Ryota, I believe about 60% groove from that alone, which will get him very close to being able to use his power. So let's see, Gimbal will likely make the play on the bomb village, like you said here. Um, Gimbal making a lot more use of the timer. Sedge has burned through five minutes of his timer already, which is a small, a small eternity when you're, you've only got 30 minutes and the game's only going to get harder and harder, like you mentioned. I'm surprised he went for the one up, up top. there. Yeah. I suppose it makes sense. Um, in the sense that he's going to actually pressure Sedge to probably go back. Because if he stays, he's at threat from the Merfolk. Kinda, not really. And the Pikemen. Right, his idea must be trying to push Sedge and kind of threaten the HQ a bit. Yeah. He's as, probably as not going to get it. As noted, both strongholds in the middle of the map on this stage. Yep. Oh, he's getting a Harpy there. Now this makes a lot of sense because this Harpy is very threatening to Sedge. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage per se, but it's just the fact that it's something in the air that Sedge can't attack. Sedge does have a mage that he may just move up in response. Um, I imagine we'll actually see him just move it up here. He can probably even hang out around here still. If he really wants to. Yeah, once that mage gets up, um, that, that harpy won't have a, a lot to threaten. Um, the only thing that really that harpy, I guess, might do is manage this naval combat in the upper left-hand corner. And if Sedge wants to defend it without buying an air unit of his own, he has to use a harpoon ship, which takes a really long time to get all the way up there. Especially on this map with all of the different water drains. A harpoon is much faster to get out going going uh, south and north sides. But yeah, those harpies are very good for threatening the, the naval units. You, you don't have to bring it to land. Yep. One more thing we'll note just for viewer's sake is uh, because we are running on a timer, we do have animations turned off for this series just to uh, standardize time for everybody. Let's see using a lot of his time yeah interesting though Gimbal's completely ignored this village in his um oh I suppose he's gonna capture it with his merfolk next turn um but he is slightly behind on the capturing there which I believe means that Sedge does have a slight income advantage at the moment yep, he has 11 he has 11 to 10 Which, I mean, you're trading that for Groove on Ryota, but then again, yeah. it's Ryota's Groove, so, like, <laughs> it doesn't hurt as much as, like, you know, giving free Groove to a Valder or a Tenri. Okay, Commander fight, 7-6. to six. Yep, so, um, Ryota's Groove is that he basically dashes, and in the most, um, and basically he can dash through allied or enemy units, and after he, like, so basically he jumps through one, and then he can chain it again if there's another unit to chain to. So he can get through quite a few units if the positioning works out really nicely. And then he does like a small amount of damage to the units, and the problem generally is that it's not enough damage to really make a big impact. It's basically a straight line checkers jump um, through multiple units is the way his groove works. It's the best way I can that describe is it. great way of putting it. Yeah. 
Uh, retreats back to get the HP from the building, and then he can most definitely protect the building with the two pikemen from the boat. Um, um let's see. I think it might I be a really so, interesting play out. for Gimbal. I need to see how far that, uh, no, there was not enough movement. I was wondering if he could do some really cool move where he places his, uh, spearman closer for a crit. But it looks like he's just gonna kind of give a bit of space here. Do you think Gimbal's a bit in disadvantage space right now? Just based on, uh, that last play with Sedge moving forward like that? Or do you think mm. he's kind of in control? Still, I think he's fine still just because he got the groove so much groove out of that trade. Although he is at um, a fairly non trivial. Well, actually, I believe Gimbal has the income advantage at the moment, and if he can hang on to that. Um, but this is just a situation where Gimbal is sort of controlling the naval side more, while Sedge is having the controlling the land more. And it's kind of arguable if he's really controlling the land. He's got the he's got the center position, but he doesn't really have like the manpower. Yeah, but that sedge positioning is um, just a lot more developed. He's it takes a well, lot of time gonna... to develop units on this map. So just the fact that he has these good units here already um, makes me fairly confident in saying that if you um, isolate just to the island, I definitely feel like there's a harpoon ship on the right. Lead. I don't know though. So my thing about that is you've control you control the center of the map as Sedge, but then but then what? You're not gonna push uh, you're not gonna push forward past the mountain. You've got yeah. you're you're building units at the same rate. You have the positioning, but you can't push forward. Meanwhile, naval, you're losing south, you're losing north. This is really dangerous all of a sudden. You can hold so the one you can hold the one village uh advantage in the center island for as long as you want. No one's gonna bother you as you lose uh, side villages. I think Sedge might be able to poke that um, three house village safely, possibly. Also, it's worth noting that I think that um, Gimbal might have been a bit too ambitious with this turtle, because this turtle I think is about to take quite a bit of damage. He can hit it with a harpoon and a harpy which combined will take it down to about only 4 health or so. Merman damage always looks uh, really um, underinflated, just because um, it doesn't show their crit on the unit matrix, and as long as they're in water, they get their crit. So they're going to do a lot. Um, they're gonna have that crit a lot. You might as well just multiply all their damage values by two when you're looking at the damage chart. So what's the way for Sedge to get out of this situation? He's got center control, like you mentioned, which isn't a bad thing, obviously. I mean, it's still good for what it is, especially with a mage in the middle. Um... But then, how do we fix the side map problems? I don't think the bottom has actually spiraled out of control that badly, because all Gimbal has is a turtle and a merfolk here, whereas um, Sedge can reinforce this with air units, and that harpoon ship is going to take a while to get down here. So I think he's okay in the south. Um, it's not as bad as it looks, basically, just because of how long supply lines are. So he is positioning down south of the island a bit. I'm not sure how effective that is. But it's definitely signaling that he's willing to give up that um, six house village. He's definitely trying to put some pressure on the harpy. And this means that he might both control the airspace of the south, which will be very valuable for winning it back. trying to push a turtle off bottom with the harpy and the merfolk yeah the turtle will be able to do pretty significant damage back to that um merfolk just because it has the crit i might have preferred it was there a better spot for him to have moved that merfolk maybe i think he does have i think defense. presumably he's gonna build maybe in our harpy out of the tower to finish off the turtle if it commits right 
Probably. Or he could just build another naval unit of his own right. as well. Well, I think you would get but, the Harpy yeah. anyways, just to, like, continue to push middle. I think this map might be a map where dragons are really good, honestly. And I could see him going for a dragon here. Or not here, but next turn. Save a bit of money. Should be noted, the top left and top right villages are on roads. The, on the only ones on roads. Stronghold, however, not on a road. The center villages, not on road. It looks like he is going for the harpy play, as you suggest. Oh, he is saving for a dragon, it looks like. Um, he did not build a harpy there. This means that he is going to have an enormous amount of money next turn, and he is he is ready for that dragon. That was a four-minute timer burn by Sedge. Gimbal pivoting down to meet Sedge. Uh, not really a good diversionary tactic. I mean, you have no two-front army here to push on the side, so Gimbal can just be content to pace himself downward. Yeah, the top is really rough for Sedge. Like, all these... This force isn't really going to be stopped anytime soon. But the thing is, is that on the south, things are actually looking very good for Sedge. Um, he will have but... the opportunity to... <laughs> very good to what end, though? Right? Like... You got two towns, and... I mean, I think it's pretty obvious he's about to get a dragon here, and the thing about trying to beat dragons with a harpoon ships is you need more than one of them at each location where you're trying to hold with a harpoon ship. Um, especially when there's not enough deep sea. It just, you need to have more than one, otherwise the dragon will still beat the harpoon ship. Once again, fast timers from Gimbal. Hasn't broken the 20 minute mark. Sedge is quickly closing in on his halfway mark at 15 minutes. Both players started this map at uh, 30 minutes apiece. Uh, again, one of those experimental timer rules that we use for Stronghold series. We kind of like to, uh, since, you know, it's not a tournament standard and we are able to run a timer, we like running different rules for timers than other tournaments. Um, so this one we decide just to sort of give ample time, but also kind of escalating uh, tension a little bit with no incremental, no uh, no fissure clock. A soldier can reach the village there, of course, on shore, so it's like you mentioned earlier, pretty good domination on uh, the southern front. And then he goes for the cap yeah. of the merfolk. I think I might have preferred if he hit it with Sedge, but that it would leave Sedge in a relatively vulnerable position. Which I assume is why he didn't do that. This turtle dead. I'm curious why Gimbal didn't take the aggressive route and attack this top village, this top middle village, to get uh, Groove Charge. We had an 80 Groove Charge, by the way, such a 32. It seems Gimbal's probably just going to kind of take it easy and let his Groove build passively while he tries to take this uh, top naval side from Sedge. There's the second dragon, so both players have dragons at this point. Um, so Faded, which player do you think is better equipped to deal with the other dragon? Because while, um, well, I think Gimbal's harpoon ship is more developed to deal with it. I don't know how effective one mage on this map is going to be against a dragon in terms of deterrence. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to say. I don't know what Sedge is... Um, looks like Sedge's plan is to use the dragon to probably go for an eight, go for a siege on the HQ. Um, but you have Gimbal's harpoon already prepared for that. I feel like both players are gonna have a hard time using their dragons. 
I think should be noted, like, Sedge does have the mage in the middle as well. He does have like the actual ground deterrent for a dragon as well. Yeah. So between um, like between the thing about this dragon, between is all, I see his... oh, you go ahead. No, I was gonna say between all the bad options, Gimbal has uh, less of them to make. But go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say I think this dragon is even less of a necessarily a stronghold siege and more of just to control this uh, naval for um, control the naval front of the south because with this. Um, he's basically saying, you need to get, like, two or so harpoon ships here in order to stop me from just winning here. Whereas, what can Gimbal's dragon do? Like, Gimbal's already won the northern sea battle, so it's not going to provide as much value, I think, in that aspect. No, he's, he's going to have to go for a big play. <laughs> I just realized my mic is mute. I was going to say that... Uh, <laughs> I was going to say... it. We're le now learning that Sedge's groove takes longer than 30 minutes to build. This is, this is not the best map for Sedge if you're trying to get off a groove. Yeah, most places where you can build groove, you're just so vulnerable, especially now that we have dragons and some more tech out. I think a part of what normally makes harpoons good at dealing with dragons is the fact that you can support them with ballistas from the land side. And the fact that ballistas are basically banned on this map is part of why I think dragons are a great pick on this map. Okay, sack for two damage there on uh, with the turtle. And then yeah. takes the village. Harpy moves down one, doesn't want to get countered by anything. And he does go for a top village with Pikeman, so that does clear that village. Can't cap it this turn. Very intimidating wall up top. Said should be able to just pivot downward, however, especially with the dragon and the naval force being gone on uh, Gimbal's side. That's going to be a really slow reinforcement from top. Let's see. Yeah, it's worth pointing out that um, Gimbal's Merfolk is covered by his Harpoon at this point. But if he just, say, uses his Harpy only, then um, it's not like the Harpoon ship can just come in and hit it without getting punished in return. Oof! Doesn't get the kill on the village. I don't know if he was in range for it or not. But uh, village survives on 3%. It's definitely one of those variants things. That's one of the things they're changing in the next patch. It's just how much damage Merfolk do to um, villages. Yeah, the variance on Merfolk Creek is, is very large, and that's something that people have not enjoyed since it's basically a coin flip. So there's the Witch. Um, that's going to be really useful for Gibbal to defend against the dragon. I assume he's just going to send this south and go with that. Faded, can you tell us a little bit about this map specifically and its history? Has it been played in a Groove of War? Are either a player familiar with the map? Um, I had an earlier version of this map um, showcased as, as a featured map by Chucklefish. 
um, should still be there. Um, but for as far as Groove of War tournaments goes, we didn't we didn't put it in any tournaments um, because it had some had some problems for tournament play. So now this is the current version of the map where I adjusted all, all of the problems to make it a bit better to play. And then uh, just to just sort of explain to the viewers, we're not going to go too deep into this map striking phase or anything like that, but um, players did go through strikes, correct, to pick their map? Or was it just a uh, coin flip choice or what? Um, it looks like players just kind of decided on, on the maps themselves instead of some sort of a pick ban system. We were pretty lax about this one. We just wanted the players to feel comfy and just play what makes them happy. I know that uh, Game 2 had uh, an interesting commander choice. We'll get to that later, but uh, stay tuned after this. It's going to be Shu versus Bella. That one's promising to be a fantastic match. Both of them highly accomplished players. Uh, not to say we don't have some great play here. Between Sedge and Gimbal B. Gimbal B on Ryota. Sedge playing himself. <laughs> I think this pike positioning is just going to be really what um, wins the game here because Sedge just doesn't have an answer for this pike um, position here. Especially now that's backed up with a witch, he doesn't have any units that can deal with it really. That is in the mountain, a very positioning. ambitious positioning from Sedge. I'm wondering if there's a way for Gimbal to punish that. With what? Oh, there's a flagstone there. Um, I did not notice that. I was thinking he could use the dragon, which he still theoretically can use the dragon to hit Sedge. Um, if he's able to clear out everything. But he has to hit from the mountainside, which is pretty pretty tough. So I think what Gimbal is going to do here is he can use a he can get a pikeman crit off and um, basically destroy that mage. Um, I believe that will do that should set it to basically nothing, honestly. Ten minutes left for Sedge. It's not looking very good for him. Gimbal's As mentioned. As mentioned before, Faded Sun is tracking the official timer. We're just hosting, uh, hosting our version of it, so he'll be the one to officially call the match. Gimbal is just Gimbal is ferociously playing his turns. He's not burning much time at all. We're on turn eight. He's averaged about a little over a minute per turn so far. He's definitely like planning this out as he goes during Sedge's turn. And now here we go with the punish on the quote-unquote ambitious positioning for Sedge with those pikemen moving up. I can't really imagine there's a f really strong punish coming from uh, Sedge to return this, but uh, definitely not looking great, especially with the mage down three. That dragon can start moving in. I think Sedge might have made a mistake not noticing the flagstone. So even though that witch looks like it should be able to hit the spot above the spearman, it actually cannot, um, if you could highlight that, um, which means that when Gimbal comes in with the dragon, he um, so he doesn't have a way of dealing with it.
second heartbeat coming out. Yeah, I think it's really bad that Sedge got his um, mage hurt. That's really going to be, I think, like what might close out the game, just because he needs the anti-air protection on the island, and now he just doesn't have it. Well, he technically could just run back and heal it on the village, but you're not you're not yeah. losing that much positioning by it, are you? I feel like if he does that, then it's like uh, he's he's losing up more and more air control. He's as opposed to the air control still... you have with the three strength mage. I mean, he has to do that ostensibly, right? But I'm just saying that that the fact he has to do that is the big problem. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a choice. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, it's lesser of two evils. You're right. Um, it's the fact that he has to be sent it back is really brutal, because now it's like okay. That still doesn't deal with the fact that there's just this ar massive army of spearmen, and Sedge never really built up an answer to it. And right now, um, with the current meta of the game, if you don't have an answer to the spearmen swarm, then, you know, you're in big trouble, generally. He answers by killing one, 7-2 on the other. Sedge can actually loop and kill the third one, but Sedge can loop and kill one. Which he does. He could do that and be safe from the dragon, which is really nice. <laughs> I mean, that was a pretty good play in of itself. That was a pretty obvious play, right? Just wipe the army that's right there. You've got Sedge with you. Briotus fall back. You can see he's playing a little bit more urgent now. He realizes he's under eight. He's under nine minutes, coming on to eight minutes. But it looks like he's sort of froze here. This is a bit of a tough position to figure out what exactly to do, because there's not really a obvious, straightforward option here. He's healing up the mage. I don't think that this is not an insignificant push here in the middle. Yeah. Gimbal lost a lot more of his spearman army than I expected. Um, I think it's because I expected Gimbal to follow up with his with the dragon hit, and I think that that was potentially a misplay that Gimbal made last turn was not fully committing to the attack and kind of saying, oh, I'll just use this dragon on a relatively this harpy mediocre can, move. This harpy south can finish off the merfolk there, out of harpoon range. The dragon is pretty uh, pretty free range at the moment as well. This is, if Sedge can beat the timer, he's not in a bad position here on center of the map. Yeah. I if really he, think if he can play his timer. I think Gimbal really screwed up the last turn just because he needed to use his dragon more aggressively. Then he would have had a bit more army and Sedge would have just not had the amount of pikemen he needed to really counter his pikemen. Dragon heals for one. You need to close your turn, Sedge, right out of time. <laughs> You don't have that much more to do! Hit the button! <laughs> he might be playing with animations on. I, I don't think so. With the with the earlier move, with all the pikemen moving out, I don't think he did. He, he looked like he was moving pretty fast there. He's got the position now, he just needs to, you know, make the most of it. Roto's about, what, two turns, I believe, from getting Groove, or one turn-ish. Um, if he kills or attacks something, he will have Groove. And we can see the rocket tag of uh, naval combat in full effect as that harpoon ship just absolutely melts. Dragon free to roam, except the mage in the middle here. Um, the there's also the witch. So the witch actually protects the majority of the army still. I think Gimbal might spend a bit of time here because I think he might have rushed on that last one, which is why he made that misplay, and I think that's going to be a problem here. Folds back to the stronghold. Harpoon yeah, I think Gimbal is trying Murfolk. to play the timer a bit here. He's thinking, well, do you know what? As long as I don't die, I sh could win on time. 
And I think that's what he's sort of thinking right now because his position has fallen apart. Well, the only problem with that is that he's running out of actual units. <laughs> like... He's not that far behind on actual units because it's mostly his units are just this big army up uh, in the top left. But the unit card is actually pretty close still. Yeah, with this fallback position, it's looking very much like he's just saying, okay, I'm playing the defender now. Um, just gotta basically play fast. I think the biggest... Uh, oh, that dragon is actually a little scary now that you look at it. That dragon is pretty threatening on the left flank. That's gonna be a hard wall to breach from yellow. So just currently at 64% groove. And Ryoto at 93. 64. He has 84 health. See. Gable might also just be playing to the potential HQ snipe if um, Sedge isn't careful. I think that's also like a yeah, it's also a possibility. But a dragon alone isn't quite enough. A dragon's gonna do about like forty to fifty damage. I want to say off the top of my head. All right, um, hold that and thought. He does have to that up. Hold that thought, because Sedge has six minutes left, and his next three turns are going to be the most important of the game, both in uh, terms of time and play. So this is a very, very crunch time situation for Sedge. And Ryota does have his groove up now, ready to go. Makes it hard to run into it, yep. Let's start looking at the... When you're playing Ryota, you can spend a long time just looking at the board, trying to figure out what the optimal thing to do is. Um, just because of how crazy you can make those grooves. I'm wondering if Sedge is going to be really aggressive here and try to get more groove here. I don't think the game will go on long enough necessarily for him to get it, but... He could get a kill, which will put him up to 84 groove, I believe, if my memory is correct. Oh man, this edge groove is slow. What else can he do? He might have a bit of trouble actually pushing in, per se. I really like this witch positioning by um, Gimbal. It's really nice here because he has the natural protection of the village there, which is giving him a bit of extra safety. So he's definitely playing a bit more risk adverse than I would like to in his situation just because of time. I think he had to play risk risk averse to get to this stronger position. Um, I, I just mean this turn but, in particular. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Um, prior to that, I think it was fine, but just right now, he's, like, kind of healing up Sedge instead of going, really going in for it, which is, might be what he needs to do right now. There's a second witch there. Um, so when you have more than one witch, you can create some really interesting commander lethals. Um, just because of how witch damage can stack, and you don't need, a, an adjacent square, because, um, witches have an ability called Hex. Where I, in a three tile radius from them, you spend 300 gold and they do 10% um, damage to every single unit in the range. It does not work on buildings. It's 
So Gimbal's gonna continue to sort of play turtle here. Um, I think he's content to just run out the timer. I think if I'm I think if I'm Gimbal, I'm not that scared of the next. Oh man, the more I look at it, it's pretty scary. <laughs> it's pretty scary staring down that sedge army wall. That's oh man. If, if I were facing this without timers, I'd be terrified. Oh, yeah, without timers, Gimbal might... Mm, if I was in Gimbal's situation, I might, like, surrender at this point. Um, just because of the positioning, but... Yeah. Yeah, Gimbal's definitely looking for a timer win here, because otherwise... Sedge has control of the entire island at this point. The counterpoint to that, though, is because um, Gimbal has such good naval control at this point, he might, in the in a long game, go for some warships and really... Oh, to... galaxy brain time, let's go. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. What happened? <laughs> so, he was able to um, dash the village off. a bit. <laughs> so there was this example of his group. He first jumped over the spearmen, then he jumped through two of Sedge's units, jumped up, including hitting the dragon for two, which was a nice bonus. Then he was able to neutralize the city and hit Sedge for two. And Ryota got put in a pretty safe position. Hex on, Hex on the top army. It looks like he might be looking to just hit Sedge to slow down the push. Give him his I, don't know if I, like, I don't know if I like the idea of him using his harpies aggressively, though. He might just use them as blockers, which I like a lot more. This is out the Kimball needs to keep an eye on his timer now, because if Sedge like can keep his turns here to a minute or less, the uh Gimbal's gonna be really, really stressed for time here. Possibly. It's a possible situation. Oh man, this is a really good game if Sedge had a one in front of that three. <laughs> <laughs> at, 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 oh. at, this point, at this point, Sed should only move what's important. You should, you should just leave certain units. Just don't don't build anymore, right? Or build only on the airport, and then uh, yeah, just push everything in the center. Maybe maybe even like surround the dragon, like cut off some of its move. Maybe I don't know. Can you you can pin a dragon by moving that merfolk up one, correct? Yeah, but it's really That's easy right. to free because there's a turtle there, so it's going to be free anyways. Well, no, because there's a witch there, too. Alright, three minutes All and right. 39 seconds left for Sedshun. Let's see what happens. No, why are you hitting the village? That doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> no. What are you going to buy? <laughs> You can't buy time, Sedge! <laughs> <laughs> HQ is a little exposed. A little bit. Not 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 effectively. If I was exposed. Sedge here, I'd be going in and just like getting some hexes off here. No, you need to absolutely kill units. Units are your goal right now. You can't you can't make a lethal play. You need to remove the army and then lethal. Yeah, I know, but just using the thing to soften up the army. Like, for example, if he had hexed before that attack, he would have killed the spearmen. I will note, the players are able to view stream, look at their own timer, and they get timed warnings in chat. They do. They are aware of the time. Oh, Sedge, why are you still doing pikemen? It's never going to reach... It's never going to be relevant. Oh man. He's got the right idea. This is a really strong push. He needs to do it faster. He needs to not he needs to not move any unit that's on the that's not on the island right now. And he just needs to punch timer. Two minutes left for Sedge. Calls time at 154, and Gimbal B with 12 smooth minutes left. 
we'll take most of the uh, remain or we'll take the remaining top left naval. What does Gimbal have to even move? Like you can't like make an aggressive stance here. I, I Gimbal doesn't actually have that many workable options either at this point, right? Um, at this point, um, Gimbal has some good hits that he can get in. I think, possibly. You think you think Gimbal also maybe makes either a dragon or a witch on the uh, tower, and just For uses sure. it to buffer more damage and buffer more. Like, just units in the way? I think there's some really interesting pike calculus that you can do as a counterattack here. Oh, he's got... Yeah, he's got a lot of damage, in, damage just punching this uh, army. Yeah. And I think that might just buy him the time he needs. In fact, can that harpy reach the dragon? No, it cannot. It is one tile short. That is a shame. Oh, but the witch can hit the dragon! Ah, uh, and I think that might be game. Yeah, Gimbal's gonna be able to kill the dragon, and there goes a lot of Sedge's threat. What? Oh, I think he might have missed that. Oh, it wouldn't have been a kill on the dragon, because, um... So, for people who are watching and don't know well, which damage isn't actually that amazing when it comes to hit, even when it's hitting other air units. What the witch does have though is a crit, which is literally if the opponent unit is not next to one of their own witches, you do, I believe, double damage. So in this case, it would have been basically enough to kill that dragon, but because that dragon is next to a witch, um, that dragon was not going to take enough damage for it to matter. Right. Faded, what do you think as we're coming to the conclusion of this match? I think Sedge is going to lose on time. I, I just don't think he has enough to keep pushing for that HQ. So, solid prediction. <laughs> very, very likely. I think I think people would bet on that prediction. Oh man, Sedge needs to just this needs to be StarCraft level APM. The way he plays this next turn. I think Gimbal's rushing it a bit. I'm seeing some moves that I'm not a super big fan of from him. I think I think if I'm Sedge, Sedge hits Soldier, Dragon hits Pike, Harpy hits Pike. Like, I mean, I think you just clear those three pikemen in front of you and just bank everything on this push with these six units, right? Seven units. You got a witch up there as well. Like, that, that kind of has to be the play, right? Second witch coming out for Gimbal. Makes that strategy harder. It's just kind of stacking witches at this point and air units and trying to protect the HQ. It's definitely a fight against time. And this is not looking great for Sedge. Sedge with 154 remaining. Gimbal pauses at 855. I'm very curious why we didn't see any warships from either player this entire game. I don't think the push is going to fail, but I do think that you have no time to capitalize on it. And he's doing. I the think math Sedge now. just finally made a fatal misplay of rushing. Um, I don't think he can protect his. Oh, I guess he can protect his dragon by keeping another witch next to it. But there's a hex. Can he get off more? He, right, that, just, that was a waste of time. Make... <laughs> that that was a waste of time hitting the merfolk south. <laughs> he needs to build like a witch now and then end his turn immediately. Forty-five. Okay, twenty-nine seconds to remain. Apologize for that. It's going to be a 30 second timer. The timer punched forward, anyways. Um. So I believe this is the end for Sedge's push. The mage is about to kill the witch, then the witch is going to kill the dragon. 
And if the witch doesn't kill the dragon, then the harpy will finish it off. Or he's just gonna use a harpy here. I don't think that that was the right what play. But he might be using, thinking that he can use his harpy to instead kill one of the Murpho, uh, kill one of the harpies, which is valid in its own right. You know what Gimbal could even do is he could retreat Ryota off the barge and just start punching end turn and just burn out Sedge's timer manually like that. I don't... He, 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 he can use this timer and play the game out, but I think he's just as valid being able to just... I mean, maybe that's a little risky. Maybe there's an HQ push in that scenario, but I do think that the faster Gimbal plays, the worse it gets for Sedge with 30 seconds remaining. Yeah. Stronghold hit. It's mm -hmm. worth noting, I don't think any noble events have been played with a timer like this, so... Time management is likely a skill that Sedge just hasn't really had to learn um, in experience, and that just might be one of the big things determining this. Yeah, he spent a lot of his uh, time on the, on the early phases. He spent a full minute on turn one. <laughs> he might be on one of the big reasons for that might be just unfamiliarity with the map, and definitely those early turns you're trying to figure out what's the capture order and stuff like that. Right, that absolutely. Really overwhelming for absolutely. The first couple of turns. And that might have really given Gimbal like the extra five minute edge that is winning him this game. I definitely think that right now Gimbal is trying to play really fast, and I think he's making some suboptimal decisions because of it. Shoutouts to Shu and Bello in chat, game to see what this timer is in action. They'll be playing next for Stronghold Series 3, game number two. Hope you guys stick around to watch that as we reach the conclusion of match number one here between Sejhan and Gimbal. Using a harpy to go into the mage. This is just Gimbal look at, sending look, everyone to the front Look line. at this just row, right? He's just like, there's a six unit gap, or a six unit uh, wall between Ryota, the HQ, and uh, Sedge. 29 Listen, seconds for Sedge. Here we go. When you're throwing the harpy into the mage, this is just like a last man, not one step back. We are every man, child, and like woman over the age of 10 is getting a rifle and going to the front lines. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That will call it for the match. Faded, can you confirm? Are we out of time? Uh, five seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, he holds it on two then. He holds it on oh. two according to the original <laughs> clock. It will just end his turn now and wins. <laughs> yeah, as soon as Gimbal hits end turn, he wins um, at this point. Unless he somehow gets his own Ryota killed from the situation. I don't think that's really possible, though. Sedge does finally have Groove. Oh, yeah. If Gimbal really wants to, he can just surround the dragon with his witches, and his dragon's actually untouchable. So, even without time, Gimbal actually wins from this position. This was a very interesting game. This was most definitely a timer game. Like, this was. The, yeah. The, the pace of. or the, uh, the positioning of this game was more determined by the timer than it was the skill of the players. Or rather, uh, positional skill mattered less than the timer itself. Yeah. For sure.
Gimbal really just flexing by continuing his turn here, but also probably not quite aware of what the timer is uh, to the exact second. For all he knows, he might be another thinking, okay, I have to deal with one more turn after this kind of mentality. But at this point, yeah, no doubt. I think even without the timer, thing, sorry. he is very close to just being able to say, okay, I hit you with the dragon again next turn and win. So I think he's pretty, that might be even what he's setting up for and playing too. We, uh, we didn't mention this on, uh, we didn't really mention, oh, uh, hold that thought. And Faded, would you like to call it? Uh, yep, Sedge is out of time. <laughs> All right. So, no matter what the results of this turn, um, it's, yeah, the win is going to go to Ryota. We'll let him finish out this, <laughs> I don't know if we'll have finish out the turn or not, but, um, let's see here. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be the win. We're just gonna let him go, but let me ping them on Discord. <laughs> Gimbal's like, I won, why are you still doing? He does get the ult off on Ryota. What a baller. Sedge, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And yeah, he calls it a defeat with ending with the ult. I love it. This guy is amazing. <laughs> oh wow, GG to both players. Um, wow, that was that was awesome. That that timer, like, I don't know if I would ever want to play with a timer like that myself, but watching it was very entertaining. Yeah, timers. Just having any kind of timer changes the game so much, makes it a much more watchable, and definitely makes the games much more interesting. That was that was pretty awesome. Um, I, I didn't mention it earlier, but uh, players who do win on this Stronghold series um, do get a very small payout. You know, nothing nothing huge, but enough to buy a good Steam game, another a good Steam game on sale. So uh, there are minor stakes to this tournament. So congrats to Gimbal for winning that. Um, yeah, what this game in summary? What do you guys think? I think. Uh, I think maybe with a one-hour timer. I don't know if Gimbal would have played differently, but if Sedge had more time... Uh... I definitely feel like Gimbal... Like, the reason why Sedge was able to get a good decision was because Gimbal was making faster moves and making some um, fairly serious mistakes, in my opinion, just because he was, you know, trying to go quickly. And it was a time management thing, right? It's very easy when you're not under the time pressure to see these kind of things. Um, but he was under the time pressure, and... That did warp the games in that way as well. So it's kind of a uh, both players being affected by the time in different ways. Faded. Yeah, what? Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, the thirty-minute timer is interesting. Um, I kind of like it. Um, if Sedge didn't use the majority of his thinking time during the beginning stages, I think we would have had a more interesting late game. I, we got a very interesting late game, regardless, but certainly <laughs> not not the one that not the one that the players planned for. I think is yeah. the important part. Wow, that was I'm kind of just blown away by how awesome that ending turned out to be, even though it was like you know just pushed by time. But wow, okay, so that was the game in summary. Faded, your map is awesome. That was a great showcase. Thank okay. you so much to Gimbal and thank you so much to Sejhan. Uh We're not done yet. We have one match to go. Uh, between Shu and Bello, they've been talking in chat, sort of uh, commentating on this match with us on the side in Twitch chat. Um, thank you so much to everyone who's watching so far. We're going to take a quick break. These games are long. We're going to take a quick restroom break. Everyone take your chance to get a glass of water, get a cup of coffee, whatever you want to do. Go pet your battle pup. We'll be back shortly with Game 2 Gimbal versus, er, Shu versus Bello.